God is an amazing God. And He continues to work in the lives of His people, not because He has to, but because He loves us so very much. Let's read the Word of God together. You are awesome, O God, in all your sanctuary. The God of Israel gives power and strength to His people. My dad passed away a few weeks ago, and I've been wondering why I've not been very emotional. And the answer to that uh, became very clear, actually just a few days ago. You see, quite some time back, I realized that uh, I was not where I needed to be in my Christian life. I've been playing at church for far too long. I've had all this knowledge and facts and information in my head, yet very little of it had ever made its way to my heart. I realized that I'd spent most of my life preparing for a journey that I never really started. God blessed me with three very special times right before my dad died. In his last few months, when he began, began to get so weary, he would pray to just go to sleep and not wake up. During that time, I was able to spend some time talking to my dad about that and just to tell him that it was okay. On his last day, I spent some great time with him, sitting by his side, talking, watching TV. And on the morning that he passed away, Robin and I were able to, to be there with my mom as he slipped into God's arms. It was so peaceful, and I wasn't sad. In fact, I've truthfully, I've been able to talk about it and to celebrate it. And that feeling of assurance has been so amazing. This past Friday, I was saying a prayer during our Friday morning Bible study, and I asked God to open the pipe between our head and our hearts, and that's when it hit me. God blessed me with these special times with my dad as his reassurance to me that the clog between my head and my heart was basically gone, to reveal to me how wonderful placing all of my trust in him can be, and to show me that I finally started my journey. And this next section is how God works in mysterious ways and in our relationships and, and with other people. And I'm very thankful to Alan for sharing that closure God allowed him to have with his, his father. Another testimony here, it says, Our family has been ripped apart by estrangement. I would consistently pray that the desire of our hearts be a God-honoring relationship with those who should be closest to us. We've seen miracles in the way God is working. He has created wonderful opportunities for a new beginning and a healing in these important relationships. And His timing continues to be incredible. I am so thankful for a new budding relationship. I've learned so many things and have grown so much during this painful journey. If things continue to improve, I can honestly say that the reconciliation we will experience it's truly worth the suffering that we have endured. God is truly faithful. And this is the testimony of Sharon Ramsey. This next testimony I got through email, and, and, and I've really enjoyed, re I've read it several times, I've really enjoyed reading it, because this is a young woman who's not just thankful for one thing, she's just got so much in her life, and she sees God working around every corner in her life, and her testimony reads this way. It says, I don't know what type of format you're looking for, so I'll just list stuff. I don't even know if you can use it, but here it goes. Now imagine not being able to use what God is doing for you. Uh, she says, God continues to put people and opportunities in my path to witness to. This is a scary thing to me, but he knows that and is forcing me out of my comfy bubble. He is also taking some of the negative influences out of my life and replacing them with positive. Namely, at work, we have a new person named Hope. Coincidence? I don't think so. He is shaping my husband right before my very eyes into an amazing Christian husband and father. This is such an inspiration and gift to me and all who know him. 
He is perpetually breaking my heart so that I can be more compassionate to others. And He keeps me humble. I still can't get through. I stand in awe of you without tearing up. He speaks to me every time I open His Word. Each time I see or learn something I never knew before. And this is very humbling and refreshing for someone who only thought they had read the Bible cover to cover. And now my favorite way, my son. He was our planned surprise. After trying for years to have a child, we made an appointment with fertility specialists to seek further assistance. Literally three days before the appointment, I found out that I was pregnant. As I was staring in disbelief at that stick, I heard God giggling and saying, Girl, I told you to trust me. Being a mother is an ongoing lesson every day in humility, love, surrender, control, and patience. And I enjoy every moment. What a mighty and faithful God we serve. I just pray He keeps using me that I can stay out of His way long enough for Him to really work in and through me. Praise the Lord, He can use an imperfect and broken person like myself. And this is the testimony of Amy Jolly. As God continues to work in all of our lives, I'm certain that each one of you have stories that are very similar to these that you've heard from Alan and Sharon and Amy. And I pray that you'll take a moment and be still, as the ladies who had battled cancer said, be still and know that He is God and see the wondrous things that He's doing in your life. Before our next video, let's read the Word of God together. Come and see what God has done. How awesome His works in man's behalf. I guess I grew up in the Church of Christ and I always, I mean, I went with my family and everything and I just never really, like, through the youth group and everything, I never really had a close friend or anyone that I really connected with. And um, and I was about, I mean, after I got through with what I did at college, and I was about to give up on church. I tried visiting everywhere. I went to all kinds. I tried different denominations, different faiths and stuff like that. And... I just didn't ever, I don't know, make the connection that I felt like that I always read about in the Bible that you were supposed to have that family. And then I wasn't going to try anywhere else. I mean, I had given up. I was done. And then my parents were like, well, try this one last place. And I came here and, and then I met several people here and got really close with my small group and it made me realize that I wasn't doing everything that I was supposed to be doing to call myself a Christian. And so I, um, I it made me really grow my comfort zone. I started doing other things that I had never done before because I had the support of a family that I didn't have before. I found my church family that I could love and they will love me no matter what. Mm. Uh, as I've said before, we worship an amazing God, but He is also, for all of us who are part of this place, He's put us in an amazing place. You know, our mission is to connect people to God and to each other. And we see that happening almost on a daily basis as God's hand works through this congregation to join us, lock arms with one another, join us to lock arms with one another so that we can go out into the world and feel confident and secure in who He is. One of the things that happens here quite frequently is that we baptize people and allow them to begin their journey with Jesus uh, at so many different ages, we, we've, I've seen baptisms of people from 10 years old to a young woman in her 80s. 
We baptize adults here, sometimes whole families. There's one particular baptism that, that we have a testimonial about, and it's a testimony of a father and, and his daughter. I believe my daughter's decision to become a Christian was a very gradual process. As parents and grandparents, my wife and I finally became focused rather than living our separate religious lives. This was a major improvement in our relationship with God. And during that time, our daughter's life was changing even more dramatically. Attendance at church became more regular and an association with Boyd Buchanan through her children became a daily activity. Her husband and mother-in-law became even more supportive. And finally, she started hosting small group meetings and this was a major accomplishment. If you know her, you know that she is her own person. And the decision came about through a thoughtful, studied, and prayerful process. Pressure, emotion, and unrealistic expectations were not a part of her decision. Perhaps the activities she engaged in and the influence of others played a part, but in the end, it was entirely her decision. Thank God for Sarah, her decision, and the influence she will have on others. And this is the testimony of Ed Brackett. Three years ago, my family and I started attending one of the churches I was most familiar with, Clear Creek Church of Christ. My parents had been members of Clear Creek for many years, and over the years, they continually encouraged my family to come back and give it another try. We agreed to visit and soon realized that we wanted to become a part of Clear Creek. We started getting uh, involved with the church activities and soon joined and hosted a weekly small group. As a young woman, baptism appeared to me to be something that most people I knew did while on an emotional high. I had only seen it done in an environment where getting baptized was highly encouraged and in some cases, even an expectation. Since that time, I'd say that getting baptized was something that I always knew I should do, but I wanted to do it at, when the time was right for me. To be completely honest, in recent years, I have heard some utterly inspiring testimonials by people who have been baptized. And I have to confess, being worried that my own testimony seems too boring by comparison. Perhaps because I'm a little older and much wiser, I'm at a point in my life where I feel much more confident about sharing my faith without feeling like I have to hide it or apologize for it as I did when I was younger. I love my God, I love my Savior, and I want my faith to be something that is real to me and to those who see me. And this is the testimony of Sarah Bullington. I just want to say this, we're here to give God glory for all the wonderful things He has done. But I also want to let you know this, if, you're, if this is your first time at Clear Creek, you need to know you're in a very special place where it's okay not to be okay, where it's okay to be authentic with who you are. I've said this time after time after time. We're just a bunch of goobers trying to get through life. We just chose to do it together. Don't take God for granted. Don't take His church for granted. It is such a wonderful blessing in the lives of so many people. Before we see a video that I call a 1% chance of a 100% God, let's read the Word of God together. You gave me life and showed me kindness, and in your providence watched over my spirit. <laughs> 